Hi, this is Brian Klug with Anontech, and in front of us today we have the LG Optimus 2X uh, with Tegra 2. So, first off, I just wanted to show some hardware comparisons. So, this is obviously the uh, this has got a four-inch uh, IPS display. Um, the front is entirely glass. One of the interesting things is that it's slightly curved here at the edges. Um, so, not it's sort of a Venue Pro-like effect. Uh, where there's a slight curvature, but really it only happens out here at the over at sort of this area and this area, and then it remains flat across the uh, the front. Um, you can sort of see that in the reflection there, just how how that works. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, of course, it seems like scratches are basically just going to develop right right here, at, uh, so it seems a little bit raised. Um, on the back, the uh, the back of the Optimus 2X is kind of a brown soft touch material um, and it shows fingerprints a little bit but not nearly as bad as other phones say like the Galaxy S um, there's a kind of metallic strip that runs up up uh, the middle of the device uh, with the with Google on it of course you've got the uh, camera port and the flash port so the flash the flash hole actually goes all the way through um, so you could definitely get dirt and grime inside there um, but the uh, and the flash, the actual camera uh, port has sort of a plastic cover on it, so that's kind of a place where you can get grime. Uh, and that's that's kind of frustrating too, since uh, you know that's one of the things I've really run into with the Nexus One, is that you'll get fingerprints right on this surface right here, um, and that will just occlude and you know provide glare in photos. Uh, so obviously, let's do a hardware comparison. You can just see how you know obviously it's four inches. Um, so it's bigger than the Nexus One. Uh, if you bring in Galaxy S, it's pretty much the same size. Um, get rid of the Nexus One. Uh, another comparison is the MyTouch 4G. Um, another similar kind of size phone. Uh, if we bring in the iPhone 4, you can see how that compares. Obviously that one's notably smaller. Um, but I mean, size isn't really everything here. As far as thickness goes, let's see. So I mean, the uh, Optimus 2X really isn't isn't very thick, um, but nor is it as thin as the uh, Galaxy S. But that's that's not really a huge problem. Obviously, the uh, this phone, the actual camera right here, is a little bit raised, um, and that's just sort of something that I've we've seen on a lot of phones obviously just the optical system requires you know a non negligible amount of thickness uh, of course when you're bringing light in so the back pops off just by peeling up on this um, then there's the 5.6 watt hour battery um, the antenna is down here at the bottom you can sort of see where that the uh, traces are when it came there was a plastic cover on top of this which is a little bit odd since it's inside inside the case but that's where the antenna definitely is uh, SD card can pop out without turning the device off which is nice um, I just have a 32 gig in up at the top is the HDMI slot uh, and there's a supplied cable as well to, to adapt that uh, I believe micro HDMI to full size HDMI um, power button uh, audio jack on this side there's nothing on the left side uh, down at the bottom uh, micro USB. This side is the uh, speaker. No, actually, this side is the microphone. This side is the speaker, uh, and that's kind of iPhone, iPhone-like. If you look at the bottom, the same sort of putting the port in the center and then uh, mesh grills on the side. Uh, over on this side, you got the volume buttons. They're nice and discreet and clicky. Um, nothing to really be changed there. On the, the front, you've got the four capacitive buttons. Uh, of course, the Android buttons. Um, are in yet another different order. So I mean, if you compare, I kind of consider the Nexus One a little bit sort of the reference for how the buttons should have been on all these Android devices. But uh, so you get the search button again on the far right, which is quite common, uh, and then you just get a completely different set of things for the for home, back, and menu. Um, if you compare with the uh, Galaxy S, however, it's basically the same exact story. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, my Touch 4G, obviously, uh, still different. Um, 
but that's that's just kind of a nitpicking thing but it's definitely noticeable if you're say upgrading from one of those you'll have a week or so where it's just very confusing um, so the the actual skin uh, that LG has applied is kind of their own so I mean you can see that right on the lock screen uh, immediately it's it's sort of different um, of course there's LG's own widget which has been really popular lately uh, I think people have ported this to other platforms as well just because it's so well done uh, their weather widget but I mean that's not a big deal um, of course you have some power options down in the notification uh, uh, shade um, media playback if you want to play stuff back you can see it going there um, of course the this is I mean all of the skin is very similar to what we've seen on the LG Optimus one uh, which we still have kicking around and that's sort of the sort of interesting thing is how applications are in this launcher sort of segregated so the pre-installed applications or sort of system applications are in this first area um, and then there is a divisor here uh, where you get all the applications that come later so if you install anything from the market or just from over the air uh, they go inside this downloads category um, and not in alphabetical order they go in the order that you actually installed them so that's that's a little bit annoying uh, and it's not it's just kind of odd considering all the other devices generally just either stick them at the end of the same list or um, you know keep them nice and alphabetized and the other interesting thing is that applications when they're installed have this N on top of them so N stands for new uh, if you launch something uh, and then come back the N goes away uh, so I mean that's that's sort of like Windows XP ish I guess love it or hate it I, I kinda always turn that off there's no real way to mark everything as yeah this isn't new um, I guess you can you can change some things uh, different grids there's a horizontal grid where you get pages um, so I mean there is some customization you can do just a vertical list which isn't really attractive um, I don't think you can reset all the categories and keep everything together um, I mean out of the box it's just kind of that way yeah so I mean here now they're alphabetized but you have to do it yourself um, other things I mean most of these pages are pretty clean there aren't too many widgets everywhere uh, one of the cool things is that you can easily clear all the widgets by just doing that if you want to get rid of everything that's kind of a cool little addition uh, one of the other things is Tegra Zone so of course Tegra Zone is um, NVIDIA Tegra's own application marketplace with higher resolution games that are catered for Tegra 2 based phones. Of course, you could, I, um, of course, there's, it's not really launched yet, but when the, at least right now it's not, but when it does launch, you'll be able to come in here and download games that are optimized for Tegra 2. Um, so I mean, it, basically the layout here is familiar territory. Uh, one of the cool things they have is official reviews, uh, sort of segregated from normal reviews, say by users. Um, so maybe as as games get more complicated and more involved, that could be interesting to see change. Uh, one of the nice things in the camera, of course, is HD recording, uh, which we go over in the full review. And uh, I mean, quality isn't really spectacular, uh, but I mean, it it is there, 1080p. Uh, what I think is more interesting is the shot mode that's a uh, continuous shot that went past. So if you, when you're in, normally this shoots 8 megapixel stills, in continuous shot mode it drops down to 2 megapixels, but the advantage is that you can take a bunch of shots in quick succession. So if we tap this, then... So we got, we got um, 6 shots, all taken pretty fast. Um, of course, if if you're moving around, you can get some blur. I mean, that's to be expected. But that's sort of something that we haven't really seen yet, is really fast shooting on any platform. Um, normal capture is a little bit speedier than normal. Of course, I, I kind of think that the, uh, the actual preview itself here in native mode is much, much more fluid than I'm used to seeing. Normally, there's a lot of... Uh, the frame rate is much lower. Um, if you come into the video application, video recordings screen, there is your full HD setting. Of course, the actual resolution is 1920 by 1088, which is a little bit interesting. 
Um, so basically that's done, uh, so we have a full macro block. Uh, so of course, there's, those are done in 16 pixel segments, so I'll, I'll let you do the math and double check that 1088 is indeed a, 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 a multiple of 16. But basically that, that's sort of the reason there. Um, but of course the, uh, the phone does have internal storage, but it's mounted like an SD card, so if you have another SD card, uh, you can sort of switch to the external SD card instead of the internal SD card. Um, so the Korean version actually has six, has a, uh, I believe 32 gigs. Uh, we only have, if I come back, uh, eight. So not all that is accessible, uh, but there is eight gigs there. Of course you can stick in a, a huge SD card like what I've done. Um, and then just use as much storage as you want up to that 32 gigs uh, X SDHC um, HDMI mirroring that's pretty cool uh, here we have our resolution settings there's not much to see there we'll show in a second um, what else gestures are pretty cool we should talk about this so uh, while, while I was at CES we I talked with the Kionics uh, people who make accelerometers for several devices uh, and they showed off a, a host of gestures, of which these are some. So you can tap on the left or right to view the next or previous picture. Um, I've seen these sort of gestures before on, on Windows Mobile a long time ago, where you would rotate the phone over to snooze, um, or stop the call, or just ignore it. Um, so that's that's interesting to actually see officially supported. So if we come over here into the uh, gallery... And let's just view some of these images that we just captured. So if I tap on the right, it goes to the next image. So just tapping it. And that's all just an accelerometer gesture. So if I, you know, tap on this side, I'll go back, etc. So what, what the uh, accelerometer actually has is some uh, hard-coded features that automatically are able to filter out other gestures and and accelerometer events and sort of they provide an API that just lets these get interpreted natively. So I mean that's pretty cool and it, it works really well in practice. We're at the end of our list here. So of course the other big thing is how how much Tegra 2 helps browsing performance um, specifically in this case page loading. So what I like to do is load the uh, Anontech home page um, and of course, all three browsers are connected to the same wireless access point. Um, it's 802.11n, um, and they've had their cache cleared as well. So if we go ahead and load these, and we've got them all set up. So if we go and load it, let's see who comes in first. So Tegra 2 was really close to the iPhone 4, uh, and then My Touch 4G finished a little bit later. So of course, I mean, the MyTouch 4G has HTC's own browser, so it's not it's not really clear um, how much of a difference that makes. Uh, I guess we could run it compared to the Nexus One as well, but that's older. Um, that gives you an idea some some of the performance, how how measurable it is. So we're connected to Wi-Fi and of course 3G right now. Um, so if you can see that this is scrolling is still. A little bit choppy, but it's actually way smoother than almost all the Android devices I've seen, except for the Galaxy S phones with, of course, their hardware accelerated browser. One of the big things for that Tegra 2 really makes obvious is how much faster Flash is. So um, this doesn't really show it, but we have there's another test. Um, you got it. This particular flash test really shows off how how much faster things are, especially if you compare if you compare that to the Nexus One um, running the same page. So if you bring that in, you can just see the difference. Um, of course, one is running at 32 FPS, the other one's at 50. Tiger Two is at like 58, 58.7 now. Um, then if you bring in the uh, My Touch 4G. Um, running the latest flash update that one's about like 35 so 
Nexus One is at around 32, My Touch 4G is at 35, uh, Tegra 2 is at 58. So I mean, that's just kind of a synthetic benchmark, but really it's it's dramatic in practice how much how much faster um, just scrolling around pages feels uh, with with the flash on Tegra 2 compared to the flash on every other platform. The hidden menus inside inside the LG Optimus 2X are really intriguing. So there's a lot, if you use any cut, you can obviously just get to this directly. I haven't found another way to do it, but these are pretty much the most comprehensive engineering menus I've ever seen. Um, and they're just interesting things like uh, there's a cool accelerometer test. Um, so this always points in the vector down so you can get a feel for just how fast that is. There's a lot of polling going on there. Of course it's Kionics accelerometer. Um, compass test. So yeah, south, north is definitely that way. One of the cool things is the uh, gyro test. Where is that? So I mean, you can do it in X. I think we're in X mode right now. There's Y. Z. Can't. Z is kind of odd. Um, so those are just cool. I mean, if you come under, there's a lot of other tests inside here. There's one for the browser um, with sort of a user agent string that you can modify. Uh, there's a GPS test that will just get all sorts of settings. Uh, one of my favorite is the modem. So if you come into engineering mode here, there's just a wealth of information from the baseband.